Billy, in the last fortnight, there have been two incidents involving videos of National Party politicians being intoxicated. It has renewed a push to have rules introduced that regulate the behaviour of politicians in their workplace, which, of course, in this case, is Parliament. How would you feel if I rocked up a little bit drunk? I mean, I think that I would have an issue with that. Fair. And it, it, it's incredible that we're talking about that potentially not being an issue in our nation's capital. So for anyone who has missed it, can you mm-hmm. quickly just take us through what are those two incidents that has triggered this conversation? So the first incident was when the Daily Mail published a video of Barnaby Joyce drunk on a pavement in Canberra. Now, Joyce, who is, of course, a Nationals MP, he was also Australia's Deputy Prime Minister, he was filmed yelling expletives into his phone while lying on the ground. Now, after that video emerged, Barnaby Joyce said that he had mixed alcohol and prescription medication and that that was what had created this illusion of drunkenness. Here he is explaining his version of events to Sunrise. I'm on a prescription uh, drug and they say certain things may happen to you if you drink and they were absolutely 100% right, they did. Now, after the incident, Nationals leader David Littleproud encouraged his colleague Barnaby Joyce to take some personal leave and said that he had, quote, embarrassed himself and embarrassed his family. Ultimately, though, Barnaby Joyce didn't heed that advice. He remained working. And this week, he said that he's giving up alcohol for Lent. Lent being a period where some Christians abstain from something that they enjoy in the lead up to Easter. So that was the first incident that triggered this conversation. And it was interesting that some of the commentary around that Barnaby Joyce video was perhaps if it was a female politician, how we responded to that in terms of the media and the public perhaps would have been slightly different. Mm. Ultimately, we didn't have to wait very long to test that theory because this week another Nationals politician is making headlines for a similar reason. What happened? That's right. So in a separate incident, Deputy Nationals Leader Perrin Davey appeared to slur her words during a Senate hearing. You come prepared, you know exactly the questions I'm going to ask about the regions, and the regions are now a topic of conversation. And I really appreciate the the focus, I appreciate the expanded interest, and um, I appreciate the change in focus, and I think it's I think we're very much now addressing a lot of the concerns I had when I first entered this parliament. So thank you. Davy admitted to drinking two glasses of wine at a social meeting before the hearing, but she denies that she was drunk. She said she is mortified by how this is being reported. She actually said yesterday that she had had emergency throat surgery in 2019, which she said affects her speech. Davy said in a radio interview, quote, I've been very conscious of it ever since and I've always thought I've managed it well. She acknowledged that when she has had a glass of wine, she can sometimes slur her words. And so again, she did confirm that she drank two glasses of wine before that hearing. So here we have two politicians who have admitted to drinking alcohol in or around the workplace. What are the rules are when it comes to drinking alcohol in Parliament? I do think that it should be said first and foremost that alcohol has always been a really prominent feature of Australia's parliament. Anyone that has worked there can attest to that. And, you know, I only had a brief stint there. And even so, the way that you make friends is just basically by going to drinks. And politicians put on drinks in their offices and that's kind of how everyone mingles. So, you know, that's my anecdotal evidence. But more importantly, there is a lot of empirical evidence that was gathered by the former Sex Discrimination Commissioner, Kate Jenkins, who reviewed Parliament House's workplace culture. She handed down that review in 2021 after a slew of allegations about toxic culture. The review found frequent alcohol consumption was part of Parliament's, quote, kind of work hard, play hard culture. Jenkins recommended restricting the availability of alcohol in Parliament. So that recommendation was made a number of years ago now. Mm. What has actually happened? Has it been implemented? So a task force was established to oversee the implementation of 
this recommendation and a number of other recommendations that were made. And the task force is made up of a number of politicians from across the political spectrum. Actually, one of those members is Perrin Davey, who, of course, is the senator we just referred to, who was accused of drinking. So just to be clear, she was part of a task force reviewing the alcohol policy in Parliament? Uh, Yeah, that is correct. But we don't have any kind of formal policy to point at yet. So The latest update from the task force that was released at the beginning of this month says that alcohol policies have been partly implemented and the update says consultation and implementation of alcohol policy for parliamentarians and their staff is anticipated in the first half of 2024. So it sounds like it's on its way soon, but, you know, not here yet. The City Morning Herald this week obtained a leaked version of the policy, so someone had given them that draft policy as it currently stands. And according to the Herald's report, it doesn't actually propose a ban on alcohol in federal parliament. Instead, part of the leaked proposal does say that, quote, alcohol or legal drug consumption should not adversely affect an individual's work performance or official conduct. Okay, so Kate Jenkins released that report in 2021. We're now in 2024. That policy still isn't finalised, but Mm -hmm. will be finalised at least in the next four months. Are there any other proposals being put on the table about regulating alcohol in Parliament House? Well, independent MP Zali Stegall, who's also on the task force, this week has suggested she thinks that random alcohol and drug testing should be adopted. We wanted to hear directly from Zali about what this could look like. Here's what she said. I mean, we don't just trust people who drink to go and drive. We implement random testing to ensure you catch people and that risk of being caught is the deterrent to keep everybody to comply with the rules. The same would apply in Parliament. We are passing laws that will impact the lives of millions of people. And so with that responsibility comes, I think, a duty of professionalism. Consuming alcohol um, on the job is just not part of it. Now, many workplaces have strong and strict alcohol policies um, or random testing. So I think it's time the parliamentary workplace got into line. So that's what Zali Stegall, an independent MP, thinks. I'm interested in what the Prime Minister thinks and also what does the opposition leader think? Well, when he was asked about this idea of a kind of blanket alcohol ban, PM Anthony Albanese said that there was no alcohol in his office, but he said, and I quote, a bit of common sense should apply. People are adults and they should behave responsibly like any adult should. So that's what the government is saying. And then Peter Dutton, who is the opposition leader, so the coalition leader, which includes both the Liberal Party and the Nationals, who are at the centre of this story, he said on Sunrise this week, people can have a drink in moderation, but you need to take responsibility, particularly if you're in the public eye. He said, I think a lot of people will learn a lesson from it. We will keep an eye on what happens, especially on that alcohol policy that is apparently coming out in the next four months or so. So it will be very interesting to see what that says. Thank you so much for joining us on The Daily Oz, whether you're on the video or whether you're listening in your ears. If you have learned something from today's episode, don't forget to hit subscribe or follow on Spotify. It really helps The Daily Oz grow and gets us in front of as many young people as possible. We'll be back again tomorrow, but until then, have a great day. Bye.